Dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. In our major reading today, we hear of a most holy place. It is a place that is both awesome and fearful. Even the priests of God were not able to endure this place at times because of the overwhelming presence of God. There are many things that inspire the people of God to faith in God. Not least among them is music. Today is Reformation Sunday, a day in which we acknowledge the beginning of the Reformation nearly 500 years ago, leading to the creation of our Lutheran Church. The chief architect of that Reformation was a man named Martin Luther, one who loved music. He both performed and wrote music. He believed that music should be an important part of our worship gatherings. I'm sure you've noticed how much of our Lutheran worship services are devoted to melody and song. There is little that inspires me to greater faith than a rousing hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty, I imagine us joining our voices with the saints of God who have sung that hymn together for 200 years now. More than 50 years ago and for more than a decade, Bethel Lutheran Church opened every one of our worship services on Sunday with that hymn. It is easy to sense, to feel the inspiration of an awesome and wondrous God in a place like this, singing a wondrous hymn like this. But what if you wandered around in the desert for a few decades? What if there was no church spire or strong brick edifice to call you to worship? Where would you find God? The people of Israel found their greatest inspiration of God in the law of God, particularly as exemplified by two stone tablets containing the Ten Commandments. You will remember in the wilderness the people of Israel lived in tents. But where, where would they house this visceral presence of God? Perhaps you remember uh, the tabernacle. Doesn't look a great deal like Bethel, does it? And in that simple tent-like structure, there was contained the holy of holies. Called the holy of holies because it contained the ark of the covenant. A covenant that God made with his people at Mount Horeb or Mount Sinai. The Holy of Holies contained the ark. The ark had in it the two stone tablets. You can see the poles that the priests carried. So long the poles, the cherubim with their wings guarding the ark of the covenant. Also the cherubim representing, representing God, representatives of the Lord Almighty. And even with their elevated status, the cherubim were called to worship God. Holy, 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 all the saints adore thee, casting down their golden crown around the glassy sea. Cherubim and seraphim, Falling down before thee, which word and art and evermore shall be. 
Meanwhile, the people of Israel settled into their way of life in the promised land. The time of the judges came and went. Prophets began to appear on the scene. Two weeks ago, we were introduced to the prophet Samuel. People clamored for kings. Oh, they got kings. And last week, we heard of the call of King David, the second king of Israel. King David, perhaps the greatest of all kings, accomplished a lot in his reign. But he had one unfulfilled dream, building a temple for the Lord God Almighty. It was God himself who decided that David would not build this temple. Instead, that task would be reserved for his son Solomon. And that is precisely where we find ourselves in the reading of God's salvation history this day. Solomon realizes that he has ascended to the throne at a time of relative peace and prosperity. He has the time, he has the resources to build the temple. The actual building of the temple is not a part of our reading for this day. Instead, we are treated to the unveiling, to the opening of the completed temple. We have heard of the Ark of the Covenant having for over 400 years to reside in tents or temporary housing, the presence of the Lord. But Solomon has spared no expense in the building of this temple. It will be the dwelling of the Most High. Do you get the sense of the excitement of the writer in 1 Kings? As he says, all the people of Israel assembled before Solomon for this holy parade. And the priests bring the ark on the heavy poles. They also bring the tent of the meeting and all the vessels. There are so many oxen and sheep slaughtered that nobody can even keep count. The priests carry the ark into the inner sanctum, the holy of holies. And then cloud or smoke begins to fill the temple so thick that the priests need to abandon their priestly duties because of the overwhelming presence of the Lord. The glory of the Lord is all around them. Holy, holy, holy Lord God all I would shall praise God in the earth and sky and sea. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Would it not have been? awesome and fearful to be in the temple on that marvelous day the sheer festivity of that day would would eclipse all of our festivals Christmas and Easter combined and that ominous filling of the temple with smoke indicative of the Lord's presence would underscore the gravity of this being the place that the Lord Almighty dwells. Now we live in a very different time under different circumstances. We have no city to which we own religious allegiance like Jerusalem in fact, one of Martin Luther's quibbles with the church in his day was their fixation on Rome and a cathedral in Rome. We have no artifacts to which we pay pilgrimage. The national offices for our Lutheran church in Chicago, are, they're just that. They're offices in a big office building near O'Hare Airport. Besides that, we live in a day, we live in a day of the living and risen Lord. This is a living and risen Lord who is the object of our affection and worship. 
That living Lord is not uh, some stones with chiseled words in them. He has promised that he would send a Holy Spirit so the living word might be in every time and every place. Even here. Now there is still some awesomeness to stand in holy places. Maybe even this place. 44 of us from Bethel will be going to the Holy Land this next June. As one who has been there one time, privileged to be there, it is awesome to stand near the place where Jesus was crucified and in the garden where Jesus rose from the dead. But most of us are not going to Israel, which is why in our day, we have chosen to build churches that inspire the awe of our magnificent God. We are clear to say that this is not the only place that God dwells. But we are ecstatic to be able to say that this is a place that God has promised to meet us in a special way. Wherever two or three are gathered in God's name, there he is in the midst of them. And so we have considered this a holy place, a place set apart for the worship of our God, a place where we call on the name of the Almighty, a place where we are encountered by the Holy Trinity. We have no ark. We have no tablets of stone. We have the living word, Holy, holy, holy. Amen. Please rise and sing, sing hymn number 504.